Um, and like I am, I'm really excited for our our Discord. I know is gonna go crazy yeah, when this drops. Absolutely. Like we're gonna be. Dude, well, I think everybody. It's one of those yeah. culturally moment games where it's like it doesn't matter if you play, you know, the weirdest obtuse like indie game to like if you only play two K all day. It's like yeah. everybody's picking this up. It almost has a GTA effect. Like yeah. everybody loves Dragon Ball. Everybody's picking this game up. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Headcanon Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Jordan, alongside my guest here, Brian. Yep. Tay is out for the... Uh, yeah, he's out of town. This week. He's out of town. Out, out of town. town. Been, out, been out there, us? going places, big places. Yeah. Dude, back in high school, or not high school, college, uh, yeah. as soon as Tay got a car, uh, he's always gone. Dude, gone. That boy stayed gone, dude. Man, there's no one Every anywhere. time we saw him, we are like, he's going places. He's gone. <laughs> I get it. Uh, I can barely talk today because my lungs are full of pollen. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking like you are gonna get fucked up by it, dude. It, apparently, it's really bad. Like, yeah. it's one of the worst places. Like, North and South Carolina are apparently one of the worst places to uh, for pollen. Yes, I, Which I, I just cleaned my car. I think two days ago, and yeah. it already has like a layer, another layer on it, and it pisses me off. I'm like, what was the point? Dude, I walked Which, outside. I mean, after, it like... gets on so thick it can give me a sinus infection by looking at it. <laughs> you look at it, you get a sinus infection from your window. <laughs> dude, yeah, dude. Well, what, like it took. It was one year. Yeah. I was at work. I left it. I left my windows cracked. Cracked. Yeah. And it so much pollen got into the car that I, I got a bad sinus infection. Yeah, dude. It's dude, uh. Dude, put the cat in timeout. <laughs> no, she's fine. She's, she <laughs> never does this. Ow, you little bitch. That's uh, what I'm saying. <laughs> Put that thing in jail. Send that um, ass, send ass to Arcatraz or whatever hell. <laughs> Put her in cat jail. Cat jail, uh, dude. And Calcatraz or whatever the fuck. Cat yeah, dude, I walked out today and the pollen, like, literally the road had a thin layer of yellow. Yellow. Yeah. yeah like, everything was coated road. in yellow. Dude, the, mm. the Wizard of Oz, that was all pollen. Because I was shot in North Carolina. <laughs> Dude, it's like I can't like I can't like it's like I'm like have like I'm running out of breath speaking and so this is gonna be a hard podcast. Sound like Mark Wahlberg in any movie ever. Yeah. <sighs> we gotta we gotta clean up the porch. We, we get, we're starting a new project. Optimus, hand me the broom. I can't fucking breathe. I gotta get a pump in. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta get a pump in, dude. It's like that yeah, is... take your time. I would love to get uh Mark Wahlberg, Ben Affleck in the same room. Just like, <laughs> why Ben Affleck? Like, I feel like and Mark? a bunch of dudes just couldn't breathe. <laughs> Does Ben Affleck do that? Ben Affleck doesn't breathe in his movies. Ben, ben like? Affleck look like he do that. He's drinking so much Dunkin'. I think he, he's gonna get like cancer <laughs> from drinking so many damn ice. Probably coffees. the cigarettes from how tired just, he is all yeah, the time. Yeah, dude. It's <laughs> <laughs> ben Affleck is my favorite like tired person. Every time I see him like smoking a cigarette, it's, it just makes me giggle. He's like the most like relatable, unrelatable person. It's just, yeah. <laughs> Because every time you see him candidly out in public, it's just, boys is going through. I've never seen him. I think the only time I've ever seen him happy is just like when he's having a, a fucking Dunkin' Donut. Yeah. That's why he got but sponsored slowly, by Dunkin' Donuts. Probably, it's like, those got to be as bad as cigarettes for you. For real. Oh, dude, I, I'm not going to disagree with that. I think they're probably worse. Probably I think they're probably worse for you than like, at least with cigarettes, you know what you're getting into, right? Well, you, you know, can. Well, here's the thing: you can have Dunkin' Donuts like all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get a donut at any moment in time. It's not regulated. You can get a donut whenever you want. You can get a donut as a 14 year old. Yeah. You oh, get, you get to start. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Straight up. Me and Sage I used mean, to eat half a dozen donuts every Friday. Dude, like at home, you ever been at home? Yes. Dude, that place is like somehow like. You could be at full of energy, David Goggins level of energy, right? <laughs> Walking there, being there for twenty minutes, and I mean, you're dragging yourself out of it. They they put something in the lighting or the air that just sucks the living soul out of you. It's like Bed Bath and Beyond, but I had the same thing with Bed Bath and Beyond. I hated wow. going to Bed Bath and Beyond for the same reason. I don't know what it is. There's something about that place that is vampiric. It yeah, sucks it, the it life sucks out of you. The living my will to live right out of my yeah. body like i like if i think if i had insomnia 
I think I would just spend <laughs> 20 minutes there. And I'd be like, I'm good. It cured it'd be me. Bloody fine by the end of it. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like a Home Depot and a Bed Bath & Beyond crossed over. Yeah. It's just like a weird warehouse. And everything kind of sucks. It's not the worst thing, but everything kind of like... It's kind of... It's re- they have a lot of tacky shit. It's all kind of rickety and like not really good. It's almost like a novelty store in a way. Like it's, it's a store where like white mothers go shop when they want something nice, but they don't want to like spend a lot of money. I, I almost, I'm pretty sure the Twilight Zone takes yeah. place in a at home. <laughs> like it's just a anomaly. It's a black hole. <laughs> it's like a. SCP. I, I swear to God, I like when I was there, I was like, I, this is what the back rooms feel like. That's like, really this is funny. where how you get to the back rooms is at an at home. I actually don't think I've been at inside of an at home. I think I've did you go to the one that's like by the Best Buy in Midtown? No, no. uh, I know where that one's at, but yeah. I went to one in uh, that's in Pineville. Gotcha. I'm back, don't worry, yeah. dude. Uh, it is go, go, go to one. It's such a bizarre place, and it might just be that particular one, but I'm pretty sure the one I went to, if I went, if I entered. The wrong door. I was in. I would be in the back. Yeah, room. <laughs> like, it would allow me. It would. I, I would enter one room. I'd be in an abandoned mall. I'd further yeah. go further in deeper than that. Back rooms. Totally That's so funny. Back rooms. Oh God, I love that. I. The, go ahead. It, it's just I don't. I like. I can't get over it. The more I think about it, I'm just like, just if you stare, it goes on and on and on. It's too big. And you're big. like, how does it still have tacky, tackier furniture? <laughs> There was no back. I spent 20 minutes going straight. <laughs> and then somehow I was back at the front. Yeah, I agree. I felt the same way about Bed Bath & Beyond. I would get lost in Bed Bath & Beyond. It's a labyrinth. What do you think it is? Do you think it's like the furniture? I think or like I think it's it has to be. Like if you see enough couches in a place, you eventually just want to lay down. But I don't feel like like IKEA's got it down pat where like you just it's like you travel through the whole snake way through it. Yeah, that's the German efficiency, baby. IKEA goes like you have one way to go, and we have a bunch yeah. of little shortcuts. But it was like, but once you start that journey, you yeah, have to keep going. You, you have don't, to finish you don't it. Midway stop to this. Yeah, you can't. We made it so that you can't go back down if you turn back. You know, it's insane. Like you can't yeah. just run into IKEA and then like dip. Like it's a fo- it's a forty it's a forty minute commitment. Yeah, and that's yeah. if you don't stop. When you're going to IKEA, you know you're going to IKEA. Yeah. You know, like you made a plan, you said like you've talked to your girlfriend and then you go like, All right, babe, today's fucking IKEA day. It, Let's that get it, some it food. is very much an IKEA. You have to like kinda of prep. You have yeah. to like you have to get fueled up. You're like, I gotta get my gotta get my coffee. Uh that's why they have like the, the, the cafe in yeah. like the mess hall and shit right there. So you can fuel for your journey. Yeah, they fucking know. That's the backpack. first thing I do. I go to IKEA and I get the meatballs and then I go shop at IKEA. Get a little bit of horse meat in you. Yeah, I got a little bit of horse meat in me. You know that had actual hurt that you know that happened once, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. Fucking they accidentally <laughs> how? They like they're like, oh shit, we're just like threw a horse in the mix. Some dude the horse factory the horse like stable next to the IKEA factory, the guy was like the farm was like, one, two, three, four We're missing two oh, horses. Fuck. Where the fuck could they have been? Mikey Grinded Where's Mikey? Down. <laughs> That's so funny. Horse meat in. I wonder how it I'm not My dad has had horse meat. In, Do in you the think UK. someone like felt a little hoarse after eating? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a great joke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't have anything else to add to that. That was a 10 out of 10 joke. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. They out there running, their belly full of whores. They get a Charlie horse. <laughs> <laughs> These are, I'm going to stop. Yeah, you want to fucking. Actually, yeah, do the answer. Episode, please, God. Just be like, I can't. I, I don't know how long I can riff about. Nothing. I don't know. The home, at home's gonna get me. I got at home brain. Yeah, you're fried. Did you go there today? I went there yesterday. I'm okay. still kind of recovering. Still from fucking it. recovering. Yeah. Just a psychic vampire in the walls there. Seriously, what the fuck is up yeah. with that place? I, I think some Home Depot kind of does that to me too. I think it might be this warehouse places. Yeah, warehouse places. Uh, Lowe's kind of does that to me. Just like, I got about, all Lowe's. Like, staring. It's. I think it might be overstimulating. Like there's That's a, a lot the, of shit, but like yeah. at home has like. Just like it's very gaudy stuff everywhere, mm-hmm. and it's like above you and to the sides of you, and your peripheral, like just surrounding you. Yeah, I think that's what it might be what it is. Like, you're constantly trying to look at something. I think that's exactly what that is. I think you're yeah. correct. I think that'd be a good place, like, to kill somebody because <laughs> then the police would have, like, 
two days of trying to find the body of just getting <laughs> just, lost. Like, they know it's there. They yeah. know exactly what aisle it's in. But then they, they just, need to dig they just all can't the bullshit. get to it. Yeah. They keep running, and it's like running in quicksand. They keep sinking <laughs> further and down into the vases. It's like 600 like Easter fucking bunny pillows yeah, that they have to like, get it's through. Like it's in, it's, I think it's in, the body's in gardening. <laughs> it's in the back. It's like good luck. Well, that's a four H. Did you bring food? Did you bring water? Like we've been here but, for eighty five hours. That's actually where the I, I guarantee you that's where the the back rooms idea started. It, someone went in a place like this and they said like, oh, I need almond water. Like this is the Dude, only I, way I, I can I sustain myself. To, I used to go to work with my dad, mm -hmm. and I swear to God, there the back rooms existed there. <laughs> He worked in like this office, and like I swear, when I saw first saw the back rooms in that whole like creepy pasta, I was like, yeah. I've been here. <laughs> this, this looks familiar. Been, that's so there's funny. actually there's a fucking image of uh, like a high school. Yeah. And everyone and, and it, it, like the the joke is is like everyone has experienced this, and I'm like, what the fuck is? It? And like for some reason, it clicks in everyone's brain. I'm like that's my high school. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. But image. it's not. It's and, like it's almost like an AI image. It's like a like lithograph or something yeah. i don't know it's just like such a weirdly nostalgic energy coming off that picture it's just like yeah I've been it's here. like almost sunset you can s almost smell it yeah you can uh, smell and f feel it you can feel like the what temperature it was in the room it's it's weird it is weird it is weird that brain is weird. same thing with like how i felt like i could almost taste the ass whooping i'm about to give everybody on sparking zero <laughs> That was a beautiful segue. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> beautiful segue. Uh, too bad you but didn't yeah, do the fucking intro. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> too bad you didn't do the fucking intro. What do you mean the intro? I oh, did no, the you intro. you did do it. You did do it. Oh, God. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I an kept, asshole. I, kept, I just steamrolled it. I just yeah, kept yeah. going through it. Oh, I'm a fucking asshole. You did, That's what happens when you're a professional, it. man. You can just, I just smooth it like butter on you. That's so funny. Smooth yeah, people are going to get their fucking asses beat in Spark right, and so, yeah. It looks great. That's what we're talking about today, by the way. Like, I just want to, like, so, uh, go ahead. Yeah. We got some new gameplay. We finally got, like, actual hard gameplay of Dragon Ball Z, yeah. Sparking Zero. Still no release date, which... Which was I'm weird. Just, but they gave I'm me watering. a release date for Sandland the game at the yeah. end of the Sparking Zero trailer. So I thought that the, the Sparking Zero was going to come out on the 28th. And I was... I, I'm, a, I almost think that this game is, gonna, this game is coming out this year. It's going but, to. It's going to. But I don't know why they just want to. Maybe it's the Japanese thing where they just kind of yeah. like, kind of keep it close to their chest. Yeah. I think they're going to, I think it's going to come out like during the holiday season, like just before fall. Either that or it's coming out like just or right over into like yeah. February of next year or something. Yeah, maybe one day they'll just fucking drop it. Like it's going to be like, like next week and they're just like, hey, just I'd kidding. Here's a game. That. Yeah, me too. But I think the gameplay is still under development. So that might be. A little indicator be. of like it's not just done yet, but right. they when kind of drip feed us. I mean, the game has been developed for what seven years. That's why we've had Xenoverse two for six hundred fucking ages. Yeah, dude. I I was thinking about this the other day. I was still in college. Yeah. When that game came out, like I got the last copy at a GameStop. It was one of the last co like physical copies. I think it was the last physical copy I ever bought for my Xbox. Yeah. I saw That's it on Xbox. That's funny. When that game came out. Yeah. Now it's been supported so for so fucking long, which gives me a lot of hope. So like they they dropped the trailer for Spark and Zero, and it looks incredible. It looks like no other Dragon Ball Z game has looked. Uh, in like such a specific like it feels like I'm watching an episode of the anime every time I'm watching these people fight. Is it is it Unreal Five? I don't know. I think it, I'm suspecting that it's it is, Unreal but I'm not Engine, sure. But I'm not sure if they, they I, I would I would almost imagine it would be Unreal, it's Unreal Five. Yeah. Well, it started developing like fucking seven years ago. That we have. Five. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. That's why, like, I'm like, it's so beautiful that I'm like, is this Unreal Engine Five? They could have. I mean, they could have ported some of the yeah. stuff over. But I'm like, it looks so beautiful. I'm like, this has to be Unreal Engine Five. Yeah. Or their lighting system is just Unreal. But get it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it could be. I mean, it could be like Unreal Engine Four. I'm gonna. I'm looking yeah, it look right it up now. Let me look that up. But no, the game looks incredible. Like just jaw dropping. Yeah, graphics. it looks fucking Unreal Engine phenomenal. 5. Yeah, so they Unreal probably ported a lot of stuff over. That makes sense. This game's been in development for years. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, like the thing about it, like it looks so good. It looks like the fighting. My fucking cat is tweaking. I'm about to throw her out of the room. Um. Feline jail, dude. Yeah. Cat it address. looks. It looks beautiful. The fighting looks like it It feels like tenkaichi 
but it looks like like burst lemon you know like it yeah, has like it crispiness kinda, to it it's got that that uh kakarot crispiness like yeah almost like the cutscenes crispy it looks yeah it looks like you're you're playing a cutscene like that's how beautiful it fucking looks well just like it like the the biggest like the most telling thing about it the game play right now is like just the blast like they they overhauled the blasting system like yeah. the the particles off of it it just like the depth of detail they're also like the like the blue and like it's super vibrant. It like yeah. it pops out like crazy. It is just a crispy looking game. Like so, like the the way that I think their lighting system, because I think Unreal Engine Five specifically has like a really really powerful lighting system. Um, yeah. Because it's all it's all like ray tracing and it's like actually simulating light rather than like what we used to have. It was just like pseudo simulated light. Uh, like back in the old days when Tenkaichi was a thing, the fact that it's got the like like super just crispy like light emission like the energy i'm looking at the video right now like the energy yeah, yeah, particles it just looks like it just looks like it's been drawn it, it looks yeah. like someone drew it and it's just very beautiful lovely to look at it's awesome i love it it's just, it's just those colors it's like it's all the beams look yeah. absolutely incredible and like the movement too like the animation quality here is like they spend their time making sure that every way that this character moves feels like a Dragon Ball Z episode. Had they? I don't know. Did they say if this game is going to be thirty locked at thirty, or is it going to be sixty frames? If it's coming out on PS Five, I'm assuming that's going it's going to be almost, sixty. It's almost. It's almost standard at this yeah. point that this game comes out in sixty frames. Coming in sixty this frames. This is definitely a type of game where it would look. It looks. It would look about a thousand times better if mm-hmm. locked at sixty at least. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I the thing that impresses me about this is like it's like stylized in like a very specific way. Like like Persona 5, I've been playing a lot of Persona lately. And Persona 5 still has like my favorite stylization of like all the Persona games. And I feel like a lot of developers after Persona 5's release were like let's stylize our shit. You know, like if we have something cool to look at then like let's put some style into it let's forget all the like the realistic 3d bullshit let's just make shit look really fucking cool yeah and i feel like i feel like dragon ball spark and zero is like if dragon balls if dragon ball c got put through like a persona stylization and like they they just got all the cool anime shit that they needed to get like finally represented yeah. well they great. i think they understand that the game is like flashy it's supposed yeah. to be it's a flashy game it's supposed to give you the experience of like you're sitting in your living room and you're watching the anime and like uh, the video that they, they release a 13 minute video and the guy hosting it very specifically said that like we wanted the game to feel like dragon ball you wanted to feel like you were goku like you were a part of the fight yeah, yeah. you're in the straightness of the anime and i think they nailed it i mean like it's the, the movement is so dynamic the animation is so crispy and like part of what i find really impressive is that, like this is a, an arena fighter so like this isn't trying to be like 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 fighters. Dragon Ball Z Fighters was a competitive game. I know that this is not going to be a competitive game in its intent. I know it's going to develop a competitive scene. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, that's and that's like one of the things I'm like really excited about was like yeah. we don't get really. I mean, we get Arena Fighters, right? But like, but they're not often good. Exactly, and like Tenkaichi and budokai series and all those those Mm -hmm. were like the last time where we had like just genuinely like just jaw dropping like funny shit happening in arena where someone like like when rochi was fighting like broly and like yeah it was like like, broly was so strong that he wouldn't even flinch (laughs) like that kind of shit it was like people were having just wackiness yeah it was just having fun fighting uh, I think honestly, like, like, I think like Vegeta turning ape in the middle of a fight. Like, yeah. it makes no sense. It's not supposed to be fair. No, it's just fun. You just have to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, and I lo- I love that about those games. Like arena fighters have been in a place where they're kind of like pseudo. They're trying to be pseudo competitive, so they're trying to like behave like a competitive fighting game, but they're right. at mechanically an arena fighter, and like oftentimes the two things just don't match up. Because like it's kind of almost. Yeah, like kind of like Final Fantasy, like fourteen or Final Fantasy fifteen to uh, sixteen. Like it's like you can't really half step it. You have to fully 
accept of what you're trying to go for. Yeah. Just fully embrace it. Yeah. It knows it's an arena fighter. It no- and it knows that it's just trying to be like fucking fast paced, action oriented. Right. And like flashy. It like, knows its know identity. What, they know what people are trying to go for. We've like had so many years of like Budokai's. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, okay, this is what, this is like how we want to play it. This is what we're expecting out of this. So let's like, let's give them what they want. Yeah, let's give them what they want. And like, I, what I think is really interesting, and I was reading, I was watching the video, and I was just kind of looking at the gameplay, and I was thinking like, what makes a competitive game kind of a competitive game? And like, it's all about resource management, right? It's resource management is the ability to like mix up your opponent when you're fighting with them. So like in fighters, I have the choice whether to use my meter to be offensive or like build meter by defending. But my combos have like a 50, 50, 25, 75. Like I have certain actions that you are just going to have to guess at. And that's how like I put the pressure on you. That's what makes like a competitive fighter kind of feel competitive, right? It's like you have to strategize against who you, the person that you're playing at, which is why they're so much fun when like us in the Discord get together and you're throwing like little fucking sparkies with Frieza at me and I have yeah. to figure out how to like kick you in the face with Vegeta. Uh, and this game, like the they they took, they borrowed those competitive elements and they just kind of put them in a arena fighter, which I think is genius. Um, cause it looks like they added, uh, t- t- a skill gauge that allows for beam deflection. So like if someone throws a Kamehameha at you, you have a, a resource that you can spend to deflect that instead of just like moving away from it. Yeah. Kind of like, it, it's very similar to, um, it's a little bit more serious than, uh, storm, the storm game. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it seems a little bit more serious, but it's still like, it know it understands like this is about. It's like fun and then like comboing, because like yeah. like you want like bad players to still have a good time. Like you right. still want that, and that's a very tricky thing to like balance. But mm-hmm. once you kind of hit that sweet spot, it's an amazing. Because if I can have fun and still lose, then you know it's a it's an amazing game. It's a good game. It doesn't matter. I just want to play it right. Yeah. I just want to see cool shit happen on my screen. Which is what I think this game fucking nails because like based on the gameplay like it just looks like you're gonna you're gonna have a good time even if you're just spectating it because it yeah. just it just seems like a it just fun looks like thing a, to look like, at it looks like an episode of anime yeah it's awesome uh so they added the beam deflection which i think is a really smart move because you and you could always clash but i think deflecting the beam is a very intentional choice because i'm sure that when you deflect the beam they're going to be in a stun lock for a couple of frames so then you can use that to like banish assault or do something to punish that beam otherwise it wouldn't be like a resource attached to it other than the fact that it just looks fucking cool uh and then they did you did you notice that they they said that they in the original tenkaichis when you dashed you moved a lot quicker and when you were standing you just kind of like floated very slowly yeah it was like kind of dr- drugged yeah the the dash speed in the old tenkaichis is now the base movement yeah uh which is keep fucking it, sick. keep it like keep you in the action completely do not have like no slow moments nothing like that yeah it's like it's very like oh, bop, 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 bop. like i'm flying all over the place i'm dodging they added a dash that consumes a little bit of key that you can use to defensively to block beams and then like attack like get in an attack they added revenge counters which like if you get hit you can like arm more of the hit kind of like you're playing broly and dragon ball fighters you can like yeah. tank the hit and then like punish the hit if you have the resource to do it so they right. added a lot of like really competitive element and they attached those things to a set of resources and that's what's going to give the game longevity. But the rest of the stuff was going to make the game really fun to play. So it's just the fact that it looks fucking incredible. Also like the the whole like uh the blast gauge yeah. battles, those are those are going to go crazy. Those dude. are so much fun. Those are going to have some like reverse moments like where someone's getting their ass is handed to them and then there's gonna they're gonna hit one of those and just be able to come back and just hit that dub (laughs) also a a sweet little mechanic that i noticed then when so when goku or when vegeta gets uh knocks goku black and then blast him right Mm -hmm. um i don't know if people notice or not there is a lock on counter it's just it's very slight so it's not like overwhelming like in xenoverses 
It's not like a big. It's not like an actual it's, lock on mechanic. It's just like a focus mechanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just kind of like you're. Well, it's a camera orientation direction. Mm-hmm. Like it kind of keeps you like if I'm moving this. If you're moving and mm-hmm. I'm like going to kind of keep my focus, but you can break that camera and then just be moving free room where you don't know where they're at because when you break eye eyesight contact. Mm-hmm. Uh, Goku got blasted but back, right? Mm-hmm. And then there was a bunch of smoke filled the screen. Yeah. Uh, he loses um, that lock on. But when Vegeta blasts through that smoke, he can and can actually see through the smoke for it. Yeah. He can actually lock back onto him again. But That's, he couldn't do yeah. it until he, he bl- Vegeta blasts in. And like little details like that go really, really long with yeah. games like this. Which I feel like is going to be like... Using the environment, like the environment is like fully destructible. It's like a massive arena. And yeah. so like the environment like interacts with you as like you play. And I think like that's going to be part of like the, 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 the mechanic there. It's just like, can you use the environment to your advantage? Like, can you confuse them by like throwing a bunch of key blasts and like drafting up smoke and then like surprising them? Uh, so well, that, like, you, and also if you like notice like, uh, Man, there's so much to talk about. I know. <laughs> um, like Frieza, like it when they sh- introduced Frieza, and then like Frieza did the death ball mm-hmm. and threw it onto the planet. You notice like the planet started exploding. It started showing like cracks of the light and everything. Yep. Like just fully destructible planets, which that's always been a kind of like a standard thing. But I, I really like to see a little bit more detail under them. Mm-hmm. I'm like I know they're probably gonna have destructible. The planets are destructible. They just blow up and everything. But I wonder if they're gonna take it like a step further or something. I wonder what that would since look it's like, a brand too. new game. That, and we can also, I just want to see a lot of the build upon, and it seems like they're kind of showing us a little bit of it right now, mm-hmm. but I know they're kind of holding a little, a little bit of it back, but I wonder if they're like, they were going to even have it go even far as if the planet explodes, you just fight out in space or something. That'd be fucking sick. That'd be a cool transition, especially now that we got like people like Beerus and, and Whis in the roster. Yeah. Like you have like universe destroying characters now. Yeah. So I wonder just... how they're going to implicate like stage environments and stuff like that now for the, certain things yeah which is really funny to think that you have like a little god of destruction fighting against the the cat lady from fucking tournament of power well, it, i don't I, like <laughs> i loved um like you saw topa fighting burner and uh, <laughs> yeah. jace and then they started whooping his which that that's also a uh i'm really excited that they brought that back that was a raging blast thing that they did uh now this i don't think you had teammates uh, like in Raging Blast, in Raging Blast, you actually had like five people on your team. Oh, and oh, then when that. when your character beat, they would get like um, you know, you would have you sub in the next person. Gotcha. Or you could switch somebody in and out. But if you had like uh, Android seventeen and Android eighteen, mm-hmm. when Android seventeen went to go do a, his finisher, it'd be a combo with Android eighteen. And I 18 see. Was yeah. still alive. It's like a tag team ultimate. So I'm thinking that they might have some kind of. Myth- mechanic like the this if they might have teams I don't, I don't really know what they're adding to it but yeah. it seems like from we're kind of getting some of the mechanics of it and it's power versus speed yeah. and how which characters you're gonna um i feel like i saw kinda, a thumbnail that said the same thing and i wasn't i didn't know what it meant <laughs> like i saw someone I guess, talk like, about this you want to it's like having a hard-hitting character or having a character to move around and doing like if you want to do heavy damage but you're slower yeah or if you want to do like um, lower damage, damage but, but you're, you're quick. you can't be touched yeah yeah that, that does feel the case is it because we got birder and jace and topo and like i feel like it's gonna be like three tiers like you have your well balances like goku and vegeta and then you're gonna have like your your hard hitters like yeah, Jiren and your topo the spectrum like super trunks and... yeah i feel like that that's gonna be that would be really fun um I think that they're adding a lot just by the fact that we have characters that are t- typically not added into the game I feel like it's going to be a lot of variety to like find what works. Yeah, if so, like the last like kind of game that we ever got like this was Rage and Blast Two. Yeah, which I didn't and... hate, but I also didn't like. What's that? Which it's like I I didn't hate Rage and Blast Two, but I also didn't like it. That's just kind of like like I know it's not like Tenkaichi, but it's like yeah. that's like the last like Vable thing that I can think of that I'm mm-hmm. like kind of compared this to like how what was the last thing that where they were pushing like how it was like yeah and and we also got like i'm i'm hoping to see like more variants mm-hmm. like um like in that game we got super saiyan 3 broly that's awesome and we got super saiyan 3 vegeta i hope we see like more like what ifs uh, variant types like that where they're like made up stuff that like yeah. you know maybe 
um, hit became the god of destruction or something like that. Yeah, yeah, little little what if scenarios. I feel like that would be yeah. cool. Like, Which I also I I think that's what the campaign's going to be because we actually saw Broly versus um, Kefla. Kefla. Yeah, I thought trailer, that was. A, so I'm actually really curious, like what the what the story, like because I, I know we're going to get a story, right? And I know it's not going to be like it's not going to be like Time Heroes or anything like that. It's not going to be like a like the Dragon Ball Heroes plotline where like they're traveling to time and like. The scene over shit because we're getting revisits of the original we're getting a, a retelling of like the original sagas all the way down to super right that's like what they talked about or am i just like saying that out of my ass oh i don't know i don't know anything of, yeah i don't think i've heard anything about the story no. me neither which i'm really curious what they're gonna do because we know for a fact that this game is just gonna be like like a like a tournament game <laughs> Like, yeah, people like, are I'm just going to fucking sign up to play. No one ever plays Fighters for, like, the story. or Yeah. Like, no one ever plays it for that. I guess, like, Xenoverse, people like the story. Yeah, I like the story of Xenoverse because it was, it was, like, a little bit of fun with the time travel stuff. Um, But the Tenkaichi games, I mean, they're always... It's always the exact same story. And we, yeah. Like, we'll, I mean, we'll eat that up. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's we'll like, still fucking it's one play of those it. things where they could keep doing the same story if we're still going to play it because that's not their main focus. It's just, yeah. like, it's, it's, a, it's nice. And um, like I am, I'm really excited for our our Discord. I know is gonna go crazy yeah, when this drops. Absolutely. Like we're gonna be. Dude, well, I think everybody. It's one of those yeah. culturally moment games where it's like it doesn't matter if you play, you know, the weirdest obtuse like indie game to like if you only play 2K all day. It's like yeah. everybody's picking this up. It almost has a GTA effect. Like yeah. everybody loves Dragon Ball. Everybody's picking this game up. And everybody specifically loves the Tenkaichi series for Dragon Ball. Like, they're yeah. universally loved and well-regarded. It's one of those classic, like, mm -hmm. sleepover PS2 games. Yeah. And, like, I know that that's just how it's going to feel when we get this. And, like, we're all in the Discord just beating the dog shit out of each other. Right. Now, before... Hang on. Before we yeah. hop on to, like, mechanics and, like, what to expect and, yeah. um, you know... Uh, I, I do want to touch on, like, clothing destruction. Yeah. Immediately notice that right off the bat Amazing. when Goku... Or I think when Vegeta got like kicked in and like immediately saw armor break and stuff, I'm like, I love that. I hope they keep that up. It's like I hope like I hope every outfit has like a destructible um, thing, and I hope it goes down from like you know medium or like go to like clean to like ruffled to like broken to like yeah. bloody or something. Yeah, like I'm, I'm like very, if Goku I'm very really excited gets to see all beat, the expanses for the game. That'd be that'd be fucking sick. Yeah, like if Goku really gets his ass beat, he's like shirtless Goku. Right. Yeah. 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 Or he's like bleeding, you know, his eyes mm -hmm. are bleeding, his lips are bleeding, stuff like that. Like, I, I'm getting my ass beat and I come back. I want to see how bloody I was. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be. No, that's a lot of characters to ask for, but I'm really hoping to get something like that again. Yeah, I mean, you essentially have to model like every character like three or four times. <laughs> that's, yeah. And hopefully that's like, that's, they just put that much love and detail into yeah. the game because they've been working on it for so long. But. Let me ask you this: do, mm -hmm. Are you th do you think we are going to get couch co-op for this? Because it would be, I feel like we're going to get robbed if we don't get couch co-op. I think they confirmed that it wasn't going to get really? couch co-op. It might be, uh, it might be like a thing that they add later, like like the demand might be there enough that like they added later. Has there ever been a game where they did that, where they they added couch um, co-op later? I don't know. I feel like the like, that might be a system where they have to like it has to be like ship with. You know? It might be well. It's all well, now. It doesn't necessarily need to, because you can just put whatever you want into a patch and it'll just download. Um. But uh, t -t -t I'm, I think one of the CODs did it. Like I think one of the Call of Duties, like a couple of years ago, launched without split screen, and then they added that in. Um. I don't know that for sure. That just feels right. We. So, I don't well, think I'm we're going to get website, but I'm not, I'm not seeing any, if, you know, I don't see if it's single player, two players up to four players. Yeah. I don't see anything. It's they cool. really haven't like divulged too, too much about the game, I guess so far, which is probably what we're all so, so fucking excited about it. Right. Like even on, we don't know if we're getting like arena fights where we can get like, you know, 10 people into a ring and fighting each other, or we, it's only going to be like, or we're going to get like something kind of like fighters had, like where it was like team base where everyone's on a team and you just cycle through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, it is. It is not a uh, local call from everything that I'm seeing online. What are you looking at? I'm looking. I'm on their. I, I just Google like Spark and Zero Couch Co-op and it's like at some point there was a conversation 
that the developer said. Like the gamer has a page that says like Spark and Zero reportedly won't include a split screen mode. Rumor about no local player. It looks like it hasn't been confirmed, but it seems like there's enough reports about it that it's likely that it doesn't. Um, or maybe that's why we haven't gotten like a fucking date. Maybe they realized they saw the 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 what what do you call it? The lashback? The backlash? Backlash. And I mean, like this is. It's I a think weird they completely choice. understand like what they're doing with the game. Yeah. Like they understand that like this is like yeah we we are going we know everybody loves Tenkaichi like we are it even but even like the gameplay and everything that kind of tells me I'm like oh these guys paid attention to the old games yeah for like, sure they are giving us exactly what what they want and they're making improvements like what twelve years later after the last one came out mm-hmm. um or maybe probably longer than that it's probably uh, been like twenty at this point. Yeah, so I feel like I feel like they it's it's a it's possible. Yeah. Now most games just don't have that anymore. It's just a feature people don't really use. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I, it seems like they they're gonna stay true to the, like, OG games. Yeah. They're gonna keep that essence. So I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed that you know they keep couch co-op because I'd love to have you know when the boys are over you want to play some. Yeah. Like, grab the sticks. Yeah, right. It's like a like fucking uh, hour. Even if it's like I don't want split screen, but even if it's like like storm, I just want like a like the camera is right. You know, like the cam like we're looking at the same camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. I mean that's and that's fine too. Like, and that's fine too. Matter. Uh, so I don't know. I everything looks like they won't include it, but I'm really hopeful that they would. But I know for a fact that I'm gonna be playing the doc. I'm gonna be hosting Dragon Ball like Spark and Zero Nights, and the Discord. I'm gonna be this like what, yeah, fighting this. This is one of those games like where it's like you don't need a practice. Yeah, like, you don't, you're not spending time in the lab for this game. You just but throw this in is hands. the game I'm gonna like so much that I'm going to be practicing. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get for good. nothing. It's like what happened like, to us with be fighters. Like, I don't need the practice, but I'm gonna be in there putting time into it. Yeah, it's like I'm that- gonna hit the exploits. I'm gonna find <laughs> every nook and cranny. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be rolling up. Where it's like a random character, you're like, "What are you finding with them? Yeah. They don't seem that good." And then I just know, a, a, like, an exploit, like Nappa and Raging Blast Two. Yeah, used to have a fucking terrible exploit. If you didn't know how to get around it, it was ruining your day. What was the exploit? What would he do? He has this blast, like where it's I forget the name of, it, but he yeah. takes his fingers and does that, and it doesn't matter where you're at in the map. It just makes a big ring around you and it explodes up. Right. And it like you did like you would just teleport away from them and you just do that or you get really far and just do kept Damn. doing that and doing that and it would just ruin your day. That's so funny. Yeah, I should like that man. And like who do, who do you think you're gonna be maining? Like who do you think is your go-to guy? I don't know yet. There's so many. I mean, because uh, I know you're gonna Goku be a good. UI, I don't yeah, know. Oh, like, fuck! Go, I forgot Gogeta. what training thing's gonna be in here. I, I don't know if like I see I like I don't know I like I'm hoping that we're gonna get the new uh the new form of Vegeta from the manga the 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 what's it called the ego it, ultra ego ultra ego or yeah. like God of Destruction or maybe I, oh that was also something I was thinking about too hopefully we'll get like a God of Destruction like um you know versions mm-hmm. of like Vegeta or something that'd be fucking sick or. Uh, I feel like so they're gonna probably add a lot of like super characters that we don't really normally see. Yeah, I know like in the older games, like we kind of got like when they wanted to add like you know they had eighty characters mm-hmm. and you, the weird characters were always like Frieza's like Ungdelings that you just never you saw in one episode and you're like oh I can the fuck is that place guy? this random <laughs> or like it's the guy alien. from the sword with the movies. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, like the guy just with the some Ocarina. random fucking dude that had like. <laughs> Two seconds of screen time. They put him in the game. I had that feeling when I saw Kakuna. I think is her name, the cat yeah. lady, the green cat lady. I was like, who the fuck is this lady? Uh, Just some uh, random like that. Someone does like the, like had maybe two episodes yeah. on a super, and they added. I'm like, oh neat. That's Tinkaichi. Like you That's have the a fun part of it, man. Stupid ass. Go crazy. Uh, like you know, um, list of people in the game. I'm excited. I'm fucking hyped. I'm, yeah, I keep looking at this trailer like, like I'm fucking ready. No, I, I'm hoping it's like everybody. I hope they don't like gatekeep a lot of characters. Yeah. I hope please like have like Super Saiyan Four, you know, have G, so have some GT characters in on day one, please. Have, <laughs> yeah, please. You know, if you're gonna have that many variants of Goku and Vegeta, have at least know, a have Gogeta. At least a Gogeta, you know. 
Omega Shinron. I mean, these are ba- standard characters. Yeah, that should be just in every Dragon Ball Z game. Movie characters, obviously, like Janimba. I gotta have my boy Janimba. Janimba, Janimba. Omega good one. Shinron. Give me a Come Oob. on now. Give me a Gogeta. Yeah, Kid Boo. Super Saiyan Four Gogeta. Super Saiyan Four Goku. Oob. Wait, you said Oob, right? Yeah, yeah. Super Saiyan Four yeah, Gogeta. Yeah, Oob in there. You know, I'm like, give me the cool shit. I want the cool shit on this. The the crazy thing, and this is like the thing that I was like really excited about. It's like if this game gets as much support, gets as much support as like Xenoverse or Xenoverse Two Please, did. Yes, like that's gonna be crazy. Like I the DLC like is gonna go hard. This game has potential. I mean, it has like I feel like a lot of those squares are like gonna be DLC characters. So I'm so I'm hoping I'm like don't lock out don't do the obvious thing lock out GT characters because that's what yeah. they've always done before. Xenoverse has did. done it. Like, Fighters don't did it lock too, those yeah. characters out. Kid Goku, please, Gogeta, please. all of those people were like DLC characters. Now I wonder how they're gonna make their like how what what do you think the DLC is looking like since we're on the subject? Anyway? I think it's gonna be like what's a season the, pass. Situation? It's gonna be a season what's pass kind of like they did with uh, with Fighters, where they like announce like two characters. Like every three months or something like that. Uh, it's gonna be like the Naruto Shinobi Strikers model, I think, where it's like you get two new characters with some ultimates, and Naruto Shinobi Striker. I think it's gonna be like that. It's just like, oh, we have a new season starting. Two, like two characters. Here's uh, Goku Black and Samasu. Yeah. Uh, and here's like some outfits, variants like or some two, shit like two, that. Two out. Yeah. Okay. That's two what I think it's gonna two be. Characters, maybe like maybe one new map or something. One new map, yeah. That's what I, that's what I'm looking like. It's like every season there's gonna be like a new set of characters that come out. Um, now whether it's gonna be two characters or three characters, or because there's a lot of volume already in the roster, so it would yeah. be crazy if they just drop like two characters. So maybe like we get like a set of five characters or something like that. Um, yeah. That they plan on dropping. Maybe some weird characters. Yeah, maybe some of the that's weirder like- ones. The one thing I'm worried about is like they're filling up a lot of those like those hexagons with variants of those characters. Like you have base, and then you have you know Super Saiyan. Yeah, which I don't mind because that's always been kind of the case. Because you can, because I like the I like installs. I'm super excited to have installs back. Like going from base like, Goku, it, like 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 transforming. Yeah, transformations. Now, I'm super excited yeah, to have yeah. that back. No, in like in Raging Blast, you could have four. Yeah, like all in one character. Like you would have it. You'd pull the trigger, right, and then you could go Super Saiyan one, two, three, and, and then, then whatever like, the other form is. Yeah, so I'm hope hopefully there. I I would hope they bring that back. I think so too, and I think you're gonna be able to like like if you pick a variant, you're gonna be able to like transform out and into like uh, like if you get base Goku, you're obviously gonna be able to go all the way to blue. Um, but if you get like Super Saiyan two Goku, then I assume that you're gonna be able to go. Other way to back to base and then blue or god or yeah, whatever the fuck. De- like de transform. De transform. So I'm really excited to have that because that's one of my favorite things about Tenkaichi is like the installs. Yeah. And I'm also expecting like, you know, like, because like we already know like you can transform too. Mm-hmm. Like Vegeta can transform into ape form. And then if they play like the old games, like he's going to have like once you beat that ape form, then you're going to have like, like no health at all. You're yeah. going to be one hit. Yeah fucking it's it's i'm so hyped i'm so fucking ready and like uh, I'm, I'm annoyed that we haven't got a release date but i know it's because they don't want to like under promise or like over promise and under deliver um but like i this is probably my like this leads to my next question because we're about to wrap up uh like summer is about to hit is there anything in particular you're excited about i don't think i'm excited about anything other than this game and elder ring dlc that's it. Dragon's Dogma. I'm kind of hyped for. I just did that already drop. Got it. Oh, was so it just review copies? Just drop. Just drop today. Actually, nice, nice, I have, nice. I put in a couple, like a little bit of it today. Mm-hmm. Still trying to get my feet. There's a lot going on. Um, the game is fun. Mm-hmm. I know it's gonna. There's gonna be some wacky stuff, but there's some questionable decisions they've added into. Oh, like what? Like the saving in it's really weird. How do you um, save? The so they only have one save slot. Oh, that's annoying. So your auto saves and your manual saves are all, all in the same thing. Mm. So if you manually save somewhere and then it goes to an auto save, it overwrites it constantly. Oh, that's serious. So it's a little fucking sketch. I don't know why in the world they fucking did that. Yeah. 
but it's, it's uh, probably just for control because i heard that so like if you have if you're a pc gamer and you're modding the game you you can mod your character's appearance but your character model is loaded from the server side so the mods will never really kick in because they want you to like pay for editing your character so yeah. they, they did a lot There's of like a, weird a decisions like already... that you know, like I know, some people are complaining about like all like the um, DLC stuff that you can buy for the game, but yeah. that's that's like, not all in game items. Do people forget about like Catcom does that for every single one of their games? Yeah, they did it for They're, DMC like, Five. Like, what's that? They did it for DMC Five, and they did it for Resident Evil. What, like a, one of the Resident Evils or all of the Resident Evils? Yeah. Like they do it for all of them. Yeah, they always have like just it, it's it's all shit that you don't have to buy. It's like lazy shit. Like if you just want to like pay to win a single player game yeah like, i guess you can yeah. ruin the experience for yourself that's what i like yeah. people are review bombing the game but i think people are review bombing it because it's crashing a lot on pc is it i know like a lot of like um there's so many uh npcs in the game that like one on when it gets on screen i think it it frame rob drips yeah i haven't no, I haven't got that far in the game. I'm literally only like 20 minutes into the game. So. Yeah, there's a there's actually I saw a Reddit post that people were killing the NPCs just so that they could get better performance. Yeah, just to get higher frame rates. <laughs> so like, they're, they're, people are making forums of like, what NPCs can you not kill, or you should not kill, and what NPCs can you kill? Yeah. to make the frame rate better, which is hilarious. Which is it's it's kind of it's one of those games like I like. I'm so happy that it came out and I'm so happy that people are excited for it. It's one of those games that like never caught my eye because I just never played the original. So I like yeah. know nothing about it. Uh, it looks great. Like the graphics look awesome. And I would yeah. love to, I'm going to watch some gameplay footage of it to see like how it feels. Um, because again, I know nothing good. about it. Like I haven't got into too many of it, but like I can already tell from the mechanic side of it, this game is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Dude, I've already picked, you can, all right, get this, right? You stun a goblin, yeah. and then you just pick him up, and then you just run over and throw him against the wall as hard as possible. <laughs> That's the shit you'd be doing. And then climbing on top of things. I can already tell. I'm like, damn, this is... That's I'm like, if the mechanics are good, I can overlook a lot of things. Yeah, the mechanics makes sense. are fucking hilarious. In a... That's how you feel about a lot of... That's how I feel about a lot of games. Like, if your game core gameplay loop is really good, I'll forgive, yeah. like, a lot of bad writing and, like, shitty... Right. Shitty other mechanics. Because even like the, I think as like people said the 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 riding was kind of like you know it's very vague it's whatever yeah. but like they said like the core of it it's like you're just running around killing monsters and I'm like thank God that's like all I want to do yeah just give me cool armor let me go find some random like monster in the woods and kill it like does it have a do. story or is it like Monster Hunter like does it, it have a narrative a story. Or? it's it's literally like a re it's a alternate dimension of the first game it's kind of like they rec they're retconning the first huh, game interesting and then they're also uh, yeah, it's just, it's just yeah. a wreck. The first game was a 360. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was a cult classic. It was like, it, like it was like one of those games that kind of like came out and then like not really people knew about it, but the people that did know about it and did play it were like obsessed with it. Yeah, it was so, like, a it's like one of the best classic. RPGs ever. Oh, sorry, Reesh. Fine. I can't even pet my own cat. Uh, yeah, I. I'm so glad that it dropped. I I'm excited for you. I'm excited to see how it looks. Uh, yeah, because like, I kind of know nothing about. It. I just I literally remember the only thing I know about Dragon's Dogma is that people in the first game would like grab NPCs and throw them off a cliff. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> thing I know about it. Uh, the game is also short, which is um, really I'm really happy about. Yeah, because I'm like I don't need it to be fucking fifty hours long yeah. or sixty or seventy. It's a 20 hour game apparently, which is like for me personally, that I, that's perfect. That's yeah. fucking, I have a hard time finishing like a 30 hour game. Yeah. Like Spider-Man took me like four weeks to do. Yeah. So 20 hour games. So I can just kind of just hop on, you know, just get some XP, kill a monster and go to sleep. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with. Yeah, that's so interesting. Cause I've been playing a lot of RPGs. Like I've been playing Persona 3 and like granted it's taken me a hot minute to like get to where I'm at in the game. But I have loved playing an RPG on a handheld and just... Yeah, I mean, it's like Persona. I've always said Persona when I played Persona Persona, Persona, Persona 5. 5 yeah. I was like, yeah, this would be a perfect Switch game. It was like, it's, it's like the type it's of the like graphics now. it has. What's that? It's on the Switch now. Yeah, it is a Switch yeah. game. Yeah, but I always said when it first initially came out, I was like, yeah, this would be perfect for it's great. on the go. It is like my favorite thing. So I've been doing a lot of that. But thanks to it being handheld, 
and like do the fact that I never really like I can squeeze 15 minutes or 20 minutes here and there. Uh, that's how I've been getting through through those big fucking you know, games. Speaking of like a good handheld game, yeah, Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai Another Road. That the PSP was an absolute great PSP Dragon Ball Z game. Yeah, I never played it. I never played it, but I know that it was good. Dude, I put fucking hours into that thing. <laughs> it was such a good game. That's so funny. Uh, yeah, the only thing that I'm really excited about this summer is going to be Elden Ring DLC. Uh, I'm I'm hyped for it. Oh, I just saw that uh, the new Final Fantasy 16 DLC. Oh yeah, that comes out on like April 16th. Like, yeah, I, which is way too soon because yeah. I still I just got Dragon's Dogma. What is, is do we know what the story is for the? FF? It's the Leviathan. Leviathan um, DLC. That's that's what I know. It's like it's gonna be about the Leviathan. So I'm assuming it happens uh, before Clive dies, right? Well, the one that just came out, it was, it's like in the middle of the story, in gotcha. the middle of the main story, gotcha, which gotcha. is super weird. I wonder how they're going to like, like load that in, in your game. When, cause if you they might the just game, do it exactly like where they're like, it's in the middle of the story again. Yeah. So just like kind of ignore. <laughs> just ignore the shit that you've already done. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like ignore that you're on the last level and, uh, just uh you Clive went and did this randomly. honestly i I respect it, even if they were yeah. like it's a flashback, like I would respect it so hard well, once it comes out, then they can sell the game again and have like, oh, this is it's the same thing kind of like how cyberpunk did, yeah, like where it's like the the whole like uh damn what was what's the, what the name of the deal phantom phantom liberty phantom, phantom liberty, liberty happens yeah. in the, right in the middle of the game, yeah, that's fun i like I'm into that so it's like better to play it like play the game in the complete edition yeah. the game of the year edition you might as well just start uh, the game over again and like play the DLC yeah yeah, yeah. and then cause you, you probably have a better time beating the game at towards the end because you got all the DLC shit in the middle yeah. <laughs> you know what Dude, I mean? Final Fantasy 16 was one of the best gaming experiences I had last year it was so good I'm so excited to yeah, jump back into Final, it well Final Fantasy 16 was my game of the year yeah. and I god it's such a good game but also, I noticed that like they didn't add anything really into Final Fantasy 16 that was going to be like super groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. They did give you a sweet sword and give you like some armor and stuff yeah. to make you overpowered, but they didn't give you any new icon or anything like that. Yeah, it was actually I was actually kind of bummed out with their their first little DLC that they dropped because they didn't do a they didn't have like an icon fight. Yeah, well, the the first DLC that they dropped was like literally just like a, hey, we're thinking about you. Watch out for the big DLC. Yeah, it was just like a... Um, it was like a midpoint DLC. Because it was free. Yeah, it was yeah, free yeah. DLC. So they were like, just have something cool. You said free? It wasn't free. It wasn't free? I thought no, it was free. it was like free. $10. Uh, I bought like the the season pass for it. I must it have been like, thinking of something. They dropped something that was free. I remember hearing that. It's almost like the one that they dropped. It's mm-hmm. like, it's all robots. It's yeah. just like a, kind of like a tower thing. Gotcha. Where you just kind of go up in a spiral. And then you fight a really hard fucking like mini boss, or nice. it's like yeah, I guess it's like it's a really really hard. And, but you know the fight you, you have right for like an icon fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like that. It's kind of like that, but it's like in the mix between an icon. It's like a huge like an icon, but you're still Clive, so gotcha. it's kind of like in the middle. Those so are kind I was of kind of a little bummed Ugh. that I'm gonna get like a cool icon fight. Dude, for nothing it. will ever top the Titan the Titan fight. Like that's I know I was like you love the Titan, I, fight, but damn, dude, the the Bahamut, the Bahamut was good. It was fine. Yeah, but at God, some point it gets so fucking like you're flying and throwing beams at each other, and I'm like, no, I want to see these men. They kept taking throw hands. to a no, just another level. Yeah. I was like, no way you can go. Oh, we're going to space. Yeah, fine. no way they're going to do like a. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, we just fused. I was like, there was it kept just throwing me over and yeah. over. Where I'm like, oh, we hit the ceiling. Sorry. Nah, that was a seal. <laughs> no. Now there's They're no like, seal. They, they, he throws a set of flare or some shit like that, and you're like, what the, the fuck? Game could end, the game really honestly should have just ended there. Like, <laughs> it's, it's really like, funny. We hit the peak. That was, uh, yeah, the Titan fight for me, just like. But the two, Titan fight was gas. Dude, I'll give you that. Two pissed off men just beating the shit out. Like, that yeah. is the manliest. For a game that's about, like, the, the least toxically masculine, like, protagonist in a game that I've seen in a minute. Like, that Titan fight was just, like, the most masculine shit. Like, it was just, dude, dude, I fucking hate you. You killed my girlfriend. Yeah. We're fucking killing each other. 
No, are you talking about the? You're also talking about the. Are you just talking about the Titan fight, or you're also talking about the um, like the the for what is it, the ancient Titan or the fallen uh, Titan? I can't. All of them, all of, like the whole bit. The all of them. The okay, whole okay. bit, like that was my favorite now, the Clive, part of the story. The Clive fight where he's just fighting. Um, what's his face? I forget his name, but I know who it is. Like hand to hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. My brain's on rod right now, but that that also was uh, great. Yes. That's probably my fa- my favorite like hand to hand combat fight. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. I love I love Final Fantasy sixteen. That's such a good fucking game. Um, yeah, I'm excited for Elden Ring DLC. That's gonna be the next big thing that I play. Yeah, uh-huh. I uh, I would love to. Man, I need to I need to pick up. I wish I just had more time in the world. Yeah. Because I'd really need to get back into like Elden Ring because I was really, really enjoying my time with Elden Dude, Ring. Dude, my girlfriend put 290 hours into Elden Ring. Insane. She beat the game you know, four times. Shit. You know, I say all this, yeah. but then it's also, I've also beaten The Witcher like three times in yeah. a row. But you did that when you were in college, systems. right? <laughs> Bought it on every fucking system. <laughs> it's so fun. I've been playing that game since 2015. Yeah. It's a good game. It's a good game. Yeah, my girlfriend put 290 hours into Elden Ring. She's put about 300 into Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, she, Jesus Christ. She loves that shit. And I'm so excited. Is exa- Libby going to pick up Dragon's Dogma? I don't think so. I don't think it's her type of game. I think it's like... She, I mean, shit, if she's in like... If she likes those games, she might she might be interested in... She might, but I she likes something that like you can just fucking dive really into. into. Like, she buys two games a year. Like maybe yeah, maybe okay. a game a year, like I buy like I bought Final Fantasy Rebirth, Persona Three, and I just bought Chrono Trigger again, uh, like on the Steam Deck. I just bought Chrono Trigger, so like I buy like oh I want to play that I'm gonna buy it and I'll get around to it eventually. Now Libby is like right. Libby is like I want to play Elden Ring and I'm gonna play Elden Ring for the next seven months of my life. God, I wish I had that yeah. mentality versus I'm like I don't need anything else. I just need a fucking commit. Which Elden Ring did. I did sink my teeth in. That is a game. Like once you get over that learning curve, you can de- you can sink your fangs into that yeah. game. She got really good. So Melania took her like twenty tries the first time. She's got to the point where she can take Melania out the first time she fights her. Yeah. Yeah. She she is so point. good at that game. I mean, at two hundred hours, yeah. Yeah, she's so good at that game that sometimes I'm like, how the fuck did you do that? She was like, I don't know. And That's just, like she got all the nook and crannies, all yeah. the fucking secret shit. And so, like, when this DLC comes out, and it's not, we call it DLC, but it's ex, ex, it's an expansion. Oh, it is a hundred percent expansion. Yeah. When it's that forty dollar price tag, it's an expansion. And uh, I'm so fucking, so I'm fucking. I all, dude, I I love playing the 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 holy paladin, mm-hmm. the whole religious angle <laughs> yeah. so much. I was almost, I was like pretty much role playing in my head when I was playing that. That when I saw in the DLC trailer that you get like wings in the spear yeah i was like god give me faith and defeat these <laughs> demons i was like i was like i have to almost have to play it because like that was my favorite move was the fucking like lightning throw yeah i love this my favorite thing is like they just added el- el- like anime elements into Elden ring mm-hmm. that is you just do like you can you're having three hands now. fight it's slow and sluggish but then at one point you just like and I'm just gonna if you hold down and do a heavy attack, you're gonna do a flip and a spin. Yeah. Go up in the air and kill him. I'm like, God, I love it's fucking that rad. so much. You can now just straight up throw hands, which is awesome. Yeah, you can just just, just fist fight. Someone just fucking just, get out of my way. I'm left. I'm right. I'm, left. <laughs> I'm really excited. But that's that's about everything that I have that I like I can think of that I'm really excited about. Um I'm really excited to like finish Persona and then dig into Final Fantasy Seven. Uh which Final Fantasy VII Rebirth hasn't... I'm not going to spend too much time about it because we got to wrap up. But Fantasy VII Rebirth hasn't hooked me yet. And I've put... I haven't... You know, I saw, I've seen stuff about it, mm-hmm. but not to the degree like, you know, the first game yeah. did. And I think it's like the open world elements. I'm struggling. I'm having friction with the open world elements of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh... They're, is it just clunky? They're not bad. Like, they're not bad systems, but they feel fluffy for now. Like, I'm in the stage when you're, like, traveling through the open world, and then, like, everything kind of triggers, like, a pop-up window. And, yeah. like, you, you're learning how to do that thing, because it's, like, the first time that you're running into it. And, like, it feels... It, they're not bad. They're well-made. Is it, is it like Remake? It's it it plays like so the fighting plays like remake, but the battle system changed enough to feel like fundamentally different. Like it's very much 
like action oriented now and you're like digging into into your spells a lot less and like you're you're now like juggling enemies and like you have like specific conditions in which you do specific things yeah um so that part is a little different but the but but just moving around moving around per se moving around is like because you have all the freedom of the open world uh it feels nothing like remake Okay. You know, because you have like that the was open like, world. That's like a weird complaint I had for the like the remake one. Where I was like, uh, like something about the just going from point A to B. Mm-hmm. It felt like there was like almost invisible boxes, kind of like just bumping. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. felt very kind of clustered in in a sense. Which I personally like love that. One of my favorite Final Fantasy games is Final Fantasy Thirteen. You know, like that's it's, that's people's biggest complaints with Final Fantasy Thirteen is that it's like super linear. And yeah, it's like like you only, you have paths. You don't have like a it's not like a wide room. It's like kind of like a narrow. Yeah. You have one line and then there may be like one or two things that you can do outside of that line. But other than that, it's like, it's like you're just moving forward all the time. Okay. And I like that about seven. So I'm struggling with rebirth to be totally engaged in the open world. Like I just kind of want to go through the main story because that's what I care about. Um, But also like in the original Final Fantasy seven, like you also had an open world element, but it was like 1997 open world elements. You know, so you just had a big overworld map and then you would do random fights in. There wasn't like mm-hmm. any towers or any exploration or anything like that to do. And you would traverse yeah. it somewhat quickly. But in, in Rebirth, if I want to go from Calm to like, you know, Gongaga, then I have to like travel that distance. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it, it's a little, it's a little tedious at first. And there's not enough like enemy fights that I want to do in between there that I feel like compelled to do. Uh, and they do a good job of populating the world, but I'm having some friction with it. I like everything about it, but I'm having some friction with the open world elements. Uh, so I haven't really delved into it until I can like fully commit to just get through it. But the narrative is fucking great. And the, the game looks gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, it's like the main thing, right? Yeah. Like... And that's, that's kind of why it bothers me that there's just a big focus on open world elements is because like, dude, just... Be Final Fantasy. Yeah. You know, like you did 16. 16 was perfect. Just, yes. Just do Final Fantasy, you know? Like, don't, I don't. Be content of like what you are, like, know what you are and just do that. Yeah. Like, I don't need Shadley. I don't need some fucking guy telling me, hey, if you find my little mm, fucking simulation, you can get materia. It's like, I don't give a shit. Give me the yeah. materia. Let me find the materia. Let me fight a yeah, big fucking dude. World. Yeah. And then let me get his materia. That's what I want to do. They're trying to like, like, well, it kind of tells me that like that it's not fun to explore. It's just like, you just want to just get straight through it. I think that it is. I think that this is where I got to like engage with the critic in my mind and say that it is fun to explore. It's just not fun for me to explore. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just not the gameplay that but I your want. Your cognizance is to know that like you can separate. Yeah. That personally, you don't like it. Personally, I don't love it. I'm not a fan of that mechanic, but it is everything is well made and well thought out. But I just don't like it. <laughs> it's almost like the like a mechanic in an RPG where it's like you can play as an archer. Yeah, the arching is good, but you just like playing as a fighter. Yeah, and that's just how you were just gonna play it. Yeah, and it's just like your preference of play style. So I know that I'm gonna miss out on about like probably. 40% of the content in the game because I'm not going to faff around with yeah. it. But it's going to be a good experience once I get through the, to the meat of the story. That's kind of how like Final Fantasy 16 was. It had like a lot of hidden stuff mm-hmm. that you could find. Not necessarily like you, you never needed it. No, if you wanted to some sweet swords and stuff, like yeah, you could go out there and get them and then you would get like yeah. you know, so and so. But it was never like you had to go do it. Yeah, the thing I liked just about like, 16... like if you wanted more out of the game. That's exactly it. It's like if you wanted more out of the game, you can just go do those things. Like the thing I liked about 16 was like the semi-open world where like you landed into a zone and then that zone was like halfway open to you. And then like you could do like a fight, you could do hunt something, you can do a side quest. And then once you were done with that area, you were fucking done. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I love that. Um, so, so yeah. You want to wrap it up? Yeah, I think I think we can yeah, pretty, we can wrap it up. stopping point right now. Uh, guys, check us out okay. on Discord. Thank you for watching, yeah. making it through the end. Uh, we guys, appreciate thank you. you. Uh, 
Thank you for stopping by. We do appreciate it. Um, if you guys want to follow the show or keep up the show or anything like that, all the links are down below. If you guys uh, really want to help us out, go down to uh, to your Spotify or iTunes or wherever you're listening to the podcast. Write us a nice review. If you guys are on YouTube watching the video, leave us a comment, um, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and then uh, join the Discord. Oh, but, yeah. Um, that's and- probably going to be the it for us. Hopefully we guys see you guys on Discord when we can kind of schedule out something to do um, a Sparking Zero tournament whenever that game releases. I was going to say, you uh, motherfuckers better get your stakes ready when that game uh, dude, drops. I am going to scorch the fucking earth. You I... don't know what hell I'm... You don't know yeah. how no neck I'm about to be. <laughs> I'm about to call out a fucking work. I'm going to put some time and effort into that fucking game. Dude. And I'm going to be... I'm just, The bragging rights are going to be gruesome. The moment Vegito is in my hands, it's over. It's over. We might have to do a situation because this game is so fun mm-hmm. in its own right, where it's not really like skill based, it's just like comical based. Yeah. That we might have to do like another thing like how we did on Yu Gi Oh, where we do like just pot in money. Yeah. And just have like a little tournament. Cause that was so fucking fun. I think that was great. <laughs> and it's gonna be a lot funnier when you know there's money on the line. You're like, God. <laughs> no, this fucking game. Ah! Yeah, it's gonna be great. Like, it, it actually play out like episodes. So <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. We will see you hopefully next week. We'll see. Yeah. Bye. Bye Bye-bye, guys.